Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are joining me for the first time, I am Julie Montague, the American Viscountess. And all this week we are doing five days of a homemade English Christmas. So today I have a very, very special guest, but before I introduce <laughs> my very special guest, um, be sure to like this video um, after you watch it, uh, be sure to subscribe and make sure that you turn notifications on as well. That way you'll be notified of all the new videos that we're putting out as in particular for our homemade English Christmas. And lastly, be sure to comment down below, especially if you're a crafter or if you're new to crafting or what other types of Christmas uh, crafts you are doing this year, be sure to comment down below. So without further ado, uh, special guest here, we have Claire. Now Claire is usually behind the camera filming me um, for our Country House series, Her, uh, she and Steven. So we've been to Eiford Manor, we've been to uh, Pentilly Castle, we've been to Dean's Court, and we've got some really exciting historic houses on the horizon uh, for 2022. But today you are in front of the camera with me. Yeah, so Claire, tell me what we are doing today to get us into this festive Christmas spirit. I thought we would make some little needle felt baubles. So they, they are all completely made of wool. There's no polystyrene at all in them. So I like to say that they are fully woolly. Great. Um, so yeah. I love that, fully woolly. And those are so sweet. They are really, really sweet. So felting, and it's called felting and then needlepoint felt. Uh, yes, yeah, so you've got flat felting or wet felting which is a bit like what's on the bag. Yeah, that, and, and did you do that? My mum did this yeah, one. Yeah, amazing. One. And then you've got needle felting, like 3D ones, which will be these ones, and the bauble. And the bauble, so ne yeah. we're doing needle felting Needle today. felting. Needle yes. felting, everybody. Right, and very, I love this. This is absolutely <laughs> beautiful. So a little snowflake on there. Yeah. Right, so how do we start? What, what do we need to do this? And by the way, we'll be putting a lot of these details down in the description below. Yeah, so you're gonna need to start off with a pad. So some people use polystyrene. I don't like the sound that polystyrene makes though. So I have actually made these little bags. They are just full of rice and then Natural. put inside some other bags. Great. Um, so yeah, and then you're gonna need some different needles. Um, so they are, they're like different gauges. So, if you want to sort of felt really quickly yeah. to do a base, then the needle's sort of harsher and it's got more barbs on, so the needles have got, if I can open the lid. Mm, sounds quite <laughs> serious. So These aren't the typical needles that we're used to just to sew. No. No, exactly. So they've all got these tiny, tiny little barbs going all the way yep. up. So they really hurt when you stab these out. Yes, yes, um, they would. But you get, yeah, so they're slightly different. And then you can also get, if you want to be ultra quick, Things like this, so you've got three needles in them. Fantastic. So are we using the three needling today? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. Um, we're just gonna use these needles Okay, today. great. And then you can have some little finger protectors if you need them. I will take those for sure. Yeah, so they just go on your fingers. I personally don't like using them. But, oh, okay, but I'll try do, them out. They do give you some protection. Okay. You've got... Something called core wool, so this sort of, it's much coarser, and it's what you will make sort of oh, all yeah. of the base, base of whatever right. you're making with. So all of these are also made with core wool to start off with, and then you just cover them with, this is merino wool, so it's a lot softer. You feel that? Oh yeah, it is, compared to the yeah, coarse wool, Yeah, compared to obviously. the coarse wool. Um, but yeah, everything you make for the base is all done on core wool. Okay, and what, do, what, so how did you make this ball? So it started life just like this right and then normally i put a knot in the middle because it just it gives you sort of a base to work from and then you basically just felt it and mold it into the shape that you want so the right. more that you sort of stab it or prick it the more the fibers will knit together and then uh. eventually you will see them start sort of taking shape how long did it take you to do this ball um a couple hours yeah exactly so mm -hmm. right so a couple hours a for this right never needle felt on top of just a table because you will snap your needles then you add yeah. more and more to yeah. it yeah so start off with sort of small amount of wool to start off with and then just keep wrapping it around and keep adding to it and you will slowly start to see it take shape always try and use the needle sort of upright or right. at an angle so you're less likely to snap them yeah Fantastic, I'm going to have snapping just... needles today. Yes, okay, I've bought some spares. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can see that that's Look already... Look at that, I had no idea. Do you know, honestly, I thought it was sort of like a, 
a ball that you just wrapped around. So in most of the ones that you will see in shops will have some sort of polystyrene element inside them. Right, but this Whereas is this natural is, coarse yeah, wool. Yeah, I don't like using polystyrene. No, wool, well so done. Is okay, all fantastic. Fully woolly. But yeah, so the more the more time you spend sort of stabbing it, the more the fibers will knit together, so the harder the ball will become. Right, because this is quite a hard ball. That's quite a hard ball. So for example, the robins, they're all made sort of separate elements. So you make the body bit first, then the head, uh, then you have to stick the wings on and make a bit of a towel. So it's that's all sort of done on the core wool, and then you add all of the colored wool over the right. top. Then he's just got some little wire legs. So that is a process. Right, well thank you Claire yeah. for doing <laughs> The yes, hard bit. I made the ball right, for you. Exactly, thank you so much. All right, so what next? We've got our ball. You've got your ball, so do you want to use that yep. one? So now we're going to just cover in, you don't have to use blue, but I thought we'd go with, yeah. with blue. Well, do you think I should do this color and then do a blue on top? If you want to, yeah. Okay, do something different. Okay, so. So take a small amount of wool, sort of about that much. Okay. So it just pulls off. Okay, Claire. <laughs> just pulls off, she says. All right, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So just gonna cover up the ball. So lay down your piece of wool, mm -hmm. just flat. Then put the ball on top. And there's probably other ways of doing this. And if there are, comment below so I can find out. And then I just really roll the ball mm -hmm. in the color. Mm -hmm. Then just start fouling it on just like that. And you'll see that it will start to knit into the nice. core wool below. So then you just keep going all the way around the ball. Right, Claire, so I think I'm I think I'm done and I yeah. didn't stab myself. Well that's that's a good thing. So it's all it's all right, yeah? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. So now you've got your colourful ball. Yes. We're gonna put the snowflake on. Now okay, this, that looks this quite is tricky. the hard bit. Oh my gosh, my arm. <laughs> so yeah, it does hurt your arms after a while. But I found that using a bit of chalk, roughly chalk out just the cross bit of the snowflake. Mm. Yeah, so then you're gonna take, so you're gonna be using the dark wool. Okay, yeah. this one. You're gonna take just a t little bit and then sort of just roll it between your fingers. So it mm. sort of starts to go a little bit like a sausage. Okay. Then place it down on top of one of the lines that you've drawn. So that's going to be my first line. Okay. Then, because I know... That's my first line. Yeah. So then just get your needle again. Mm -hmm. And then all you're going to do is just sort of felt back into it. I felt straight back over into the top. it. Yeah. So it starts to then knit its way oh. through the colour and then sort of through the core felt as well. Okay. And you don't have to sort of do this too much, as long as it's stuck on the ball. Right, okay. I could see, I let go for a second and I, I could see where I needed to. Yeah. What about the ends then? The ends just leave for the moment. So you okay. will get this sort of, it'll look a bit scruffy for the minute because you'll get this little scraggly bit at the end. Mm -hmm. But we'll just get sort of the three key lines in that will make sort of the, the six okay. points of the snowflake. And then when you are needle fouling, always make sure that you can see your fingers, so. If you've got loads and loads of wool when you're mm -hmm. making something to start off with, never sort of grab loads of it and then start needle fouling it so you can't see your fingers because you will soon find your fingers and yeah, it will exactly. hurt. Yeah, exactly. That's brilliant. Quite pleased with this. Are you going to cut the ends off? No, we're just going to mm. felt it in. So it's never really very good practice to cut your wool pull it apart right. rather than cut okay, it. And okay. then when you cut it, you obviously get sort of quite a harsh line where you've cut it. And that can be quite difficult to felt away. So Gotcha, okay. You can't so see So you hear that everybody, cutting. you don't want to cut the wool. That's what I was thinking. Oh, just cut the wool. No, just sort of tease it away instead. Tease it, okay. All right, Claire, so I think mine are stuck in. Yeah, they're stuck in. So now we want to sort of do the, the pointy bit of the snowflake. Okay. So I've sort of teased off some of the excess that I don't need. Have a, a rough idea about where you want your last bit of snowflake to be. And then with the end bits, you're literally just going to sort of grab it with a needle and then mm -hmm. just poke it in. 
And they're not all gonna obviously be identical, so one little bit might be slightly longer than the other bit. Uh -huh. But as snowflakes are all unique, I don't think it matters. And then if you find that, like, I've got a slightly shorter line here, mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more just to make that line a little bit longer. Because ah. you can always add it. Yeah, so you can always add. It's easier to add than it is to take away but you can take away if you want, because even these bits, now you've felted them on, if you get a needle just underneath, they will lift back off again. Right, okay, gotcha, um, that makes sense. If you wanted to take them off. Yeah. Okay, so how do you get the ends on? Claire, let me see yours, look at Claire. Look at perfect Claire's, it's like perfect. Okay, so how do you get then those little ends on? The little end bits, so the little end bits, again, similar technique to how we did the actual big lines, but you just take a smaller piece of wool. So okay. even, yeah, so a really small bit of wool. So again, if you just sort of roll it between your fingers, just a tiny bit, then you can just, if you sort of place one bit going up and then the other bit, so, so the middle of the V is on the line mm -hmm. of the arm, I'm yeah. sort of, okay. of the snowflake, then I found it easier if you felt the middle bit in first. Mm -hmm. And again, they're not always going to be on the same place on all six no, of your arms. No, exactly. Or the same length. <gasps> it's starting to, I think, kind of look like a snowflake. I mean, yeah. it, listen, for a first timer. I think it's brilliant. I mean, first timer? <laughs> I mean, we will see. All right, Claire, I think I'm done. I, think I mean, are. it's not as good as Claire's, but I'm pretty, I mean, it, listen, for me, it does good. look like a snowflake, so. It does look like a snowflake. You know, a falling yeah. snowflake. All right, next step. So we've got to make this, obviously, hang from yeah, the tree. Yeah, so we've got to put the hanger on. So I've just got some gold embroidery thread here. Oops. Okay, fantastic. So if we just cut a little bit off. Yeah. And the question is, how do you get it in the middle? So, so you're going to put it through. Put it through, you're going to knot one end. So I'm just going to knot an end now. Yeah, so doesn't matter how neat your knot is, because you're not going to see it. So what I tend to do is sort of go in at the side, mm -hmm. wiggle it up until, oh and it takes some gosh. practice until, oh, that went straight through. But until you can see the other end of the needle obviously pointing out through the roughly middle. the middle, yeah. And then just pull it through. Oh my goodness. Right. Then just go straight back sort of down, so okay. next to where you put it in. So then I'm just gonna pull that through. Mm -hmm. Okay. But hold on to sort of the loopy bit. And, and then, then you just wanna it. sort of pull the needle oh. out. And you can carry on sort of just pulling that up. What? To make it a loop. Then these last little bits. That's incredible. You can either cut off, or I tend to just sort what? of felt them back in. Or I will cut off most of the strandy bits. Okay. And you can, if you've got enough thread, I didn't quite have enough thread, whilst it's still on the needle, just sort of loop it back under and round just to make it a bit more secure. And voila, you have this. And you have that, yeah. Incredible. Then just use another tiny bit of wool just over the top, just to cover it up. And that's it. And that's it, yeah. Incredible. And then you end up, I'm gonna do mine later. Yeah. Um, but you end up, I'm gonna have Claire do mine later. <laughs> <laughs> for a first timer, it looks really I'm good. I'm happy. I can't wait for Claire to put the, the <laughs> string on mine. Down. So that so, is yeah. how you do it. Yep. This was, I have to say, rather therapeutic. Yeah, Claire. they are quite therapeutic. Yeah, though, really indeed. therapeutic. And I found it just, it's just like you're in the present moment. So. Yeah. They're good fun to make. Yeah, really relaxing and really good fun to do over the holidays <laughs> when we all have hopefully a little bit more time yeah. to do crafting, but incredible felting. So Claire has obviously done these beautiful ones. <laughs> Mine will be added to the mix yeah. after this because I'm going to have Claire put my gold ribbon in. Mm -hmm. um, amazing, Claire. These are, I mean, these are brilliant. I would buy these in a shop. <laughs> They're so good and more so because Claire did it. So do comment down below um, just of your, uh, any tips that you have, uh, any time that you've done felting, any designs or patterns that you've done that have worked really well. Uh, we'd love to hear. And again, let us know what your favorite Christmas homemade um, crafting is uh, down below and anything else, yeah? Yeah. That's it, so thanks everybody. And again, don't forget to subscribe 
hit the like button and make sure you have notifications on because we are doing our five days of a homemade English Christmas.